Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. And the way we do that here on First Five is by spending a little time together in the Word of God and in prayer. And so, what we do every morning, and you probably know this if you've been with me before, is we take a little time and together read one full chapter of Scripture every day. And so every morning, I read a chapter and I invite you to read the same chapter. And so together, we are working our way book by book through the New Testament. Now, right now, we are in the book of 2 Corinthians. This is Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. And so today, we come to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And so my invitation to you would be that when we're all done today, just take a moment and read the whole of 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Uh, the, the chapters in 2 Corinthians are not terribly long. It's not too long to read it, but I think you'll find it really helpful. Now, for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to read just a portion of that. We'll be looking at verses 5 through 10. So if you have a Bible handy or you want to pull it up on your phone, I invite you to join me in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 beginning in verse 5. Here Paul writes, For when we came into Macedonia, we had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn, conflicts on the outside, fears within. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not only by his coming, but also by the comfort you had given him. He told us about your longing for me, your deep sorrow and your ardent concern for me, so that my joy was greater than ever. Even if I caused you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Yet now I am happy not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led you to repentance. For you became sorrowful as God intended, and so were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. Here in this passage, the Apostle Paul draws kind of an interesting distinction between what he calls godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. He brings this up because in his first letter and then in the personal visit that ensued, he had some hard things that he had to say to the people. He had to confront them on some fairly significant areas of sin in their life. And if you've been with us for a little while, you might remember some of those. There was a, a situation of incest, there was infighting, there was you know, power struggles, and just a lot of stuff that really was not good or godly or appropriate for any Christian church. And so Paul had to, in his letter, speak harshly. He had to speak strongly, firmly about those things. He had to confront that sin head on. And Paul realized that his letter brought sorrow. And to a certain extent or for a certain time, he regrets that. But he does say that he doesn't regret saying what needed to be said, but his regret was that it made them sad, that it was heartbreaking to them to have to hear that and to have to be held accountable to that, to have to hear something that was un, uneasy to uh, feel addressed. But even that, he says, was only a temporary pain because he could see that the things that he said led them to repentance. This is why he says godly sorrow leads to repentance, whereas worldly sorrow only leads to regret and ultimately death. 
I think there's actually a very important lesson that many of us struggle with being addressed here in Paul's teachings. And it's one that I know I've had to learn for myself. When someone we love is going down the wrong path, right? They are going in directions that are unhealthy for them and ungodly. They are going to face sorrow. The only question is, what kind of sorrow? When those bad choices or that sinful behavior continues, uh, that will lead them down a path of worldly sorrow. It will bring them pain and hardship and strife and struggle in their lives. It will lead to regrets and if left unchecked, Paul says it will lead to spiritual death. However, if we allow God to speak into our lives through the conviction of the Holy Spirit or through the words of a fellow believer who holds us accountable, we will have godly sorrow that leads to repentance. And so, for too often, people end up going down the path that leads to worldly sorrow. Because no one has the courage to do what Paul did, to hold them accountable, to speak into their lives, to help them to identify those places that were ungodly in their behavior. We don't do that often. We don't hold people accountable to those kinds of things that are leading to destruction because we don't want them to feel bad and we don't want to be the ones to make them feel bad so we don't speak into this situation. But think about it for a minute and be honest with me. If you were the one who was going down a path that could lead to destruction, which would you want? Worldly sorrow that leads to regret or death, or godly sorrow that leads to repentance and life. My encouragement, let's do the hard things. In the end, it is the loving thing to do. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, there is a worldly sorrow and there is a godly sorrow. And when we follow the path of sin, it often leads us to a worldly sorrow, it leads to harm in our lives, it leads to even spiritual death. But Lord, when we're confronted for those things in our lives that are not for you, not in your desire for us, it leads to a godly sorrow. We're sorry, we feel bad about the, the words that had to hold us accountable, but it leads us to a repentance that brings life. And so help us, Lord, to be the kind of people who bring about godly sorrow when that is necessary. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.